Hi, uh, John here. Today, um, Monday, the 17th of October 2016. I'm just videoing this video of this um, article. Um, which concerns me and I want you to see it in, before they wipe it from the internet well here goes YouTube is hiding this video the economy is collapsing martial law and FEMA camps and NWO New World Order okay so here we go concerns, Jared. The first is that for any American who has money in a U.S. bank account, the stock market, bonds, anywhere in the U.S. dollars, your assets could see a massive collapse in value. But my second concern is perhaps bigger than that and will have dire consequences for every American. You see, as I said, our government is broke. As a result, they're going to take very desperate and even radical measures that might seem unconstitutional in order to save our financial system. In short, oh, Jared, like I, I believe the government could soon enact what I call financial martial law. Martial law, you mean like using force? They will try anything they can think of, and I'm sure they'll become creative if they need to be. It just seems crazy. I mean, how could the government get away with that? Most people only know about ordinary martial law, which usually happens after a natural disaster or some kind of riot. For example, after Hurricane Katrina, the government sent in the military and National Guard to certain neighborhoods to keep the peace. And as most people know, when martial law goes into effect, martial all the conventional rules Lee. of liberty go King off the window. Paul. The government sets curfews, decides who's allowed in certain areas, that type of thing. And yes, State they use emergency. force. Well, financial martial law is a bit different, but it's a heck of a lot scarier. They can literally come in and force you to invest in certain things because if nobody wants government bonds anymore, and that's going to come, they'll say, well, if you have a retirement fund, you will buy government bonds. Mm -hmm. Martial law means force. When financial martial law force. goes into effect, all the financial rules you know about will go out the window. Everything you've earned, saved, They're invested in, is all fair game for the U.S. government to seize. In California? You think your money is yours and the Listen. government can't touch it? Uh-uh, not anymore. The government is going to embark on a money grab the likes of Full which slow. we haven't seen in 50 years. I don't understand. I mean, doesn't, doesn't something like that completely violate the U.S. Constitution? Jared, if we see a full-blown currency crisis in this country, we will continue to see significant attacks on the Constitution and your liberties. Remember, the U.S. government will use any means necessary to protect and save the financial system. What I call financial martial law is what happens when the government finds itself in a desperate situation, very much like we're in right now, and decides to radically change the financial rules in order to keep the peace. Change the government. But I haven't even told you the worst part. Every single time the U.S. government has used financial martial law in the past, it's resulted in huge losses of wealth for individuals like you and me. Not them. But I've already paid my taxes, right? I mean, how can the government just walk up and start grabbing money out of my private account? To the authoritarians, America's security and future is more important than any single individual, Jared. I've had members of the Fed tell me this personally. They've told me they acknowledge that radical Fed measures often hurt individuals, especially seniors and retirees, but it's just the price we have to pay for the greater good. In a crisis situation, the government will put their hands on your bank account, stock market account, your retirement account, your pension, you name it. Any place you have an asset priced in U.S. dollars, you could ultimately kiss up 80% of it goodbye. But that seems like a pretty big leap from where we are today. It's coming, Jared. They'll change the laws on what we Pretty can sure. do with your money, how much you can access, and where you can spend it. They might even change the money itself. The people will eventually have to wake up and find out what's going on. When I show you what's being proposed, I think you'll be pretty surprised. American history has shown us many times that when the government needs to save itself, it won't hesitate to steal your money. 
So you're saying the government has done this type of thing before, right here in America? Several times. For example, what if I told you every U.S. dollar you have in the bank right now could one day be worth just a single penny? Penny. Look it up in the history books, Jared. In the earliest years of our country, there was a Continental Congress who was as desperate for money as our current government is today. But I'm then there was no Federal British. Reserve, so they created something called Continentals, Bills of Credit, or Continentals for short. In essence, they printed money out of... Refresh with the new 2-liter Kia Cerato EX hatch, because you deserve the latest in technology and comfort for just $29,990. Be confident about what's behind you. They issued more than $240 million worth of Continentals and then forced it on the people. What do you mean uh, by force? Anyone who Marshall. refused to accept America's new Continental funny money faced stiff penalties. In Virginia, for example, refusing to accept the new currency for an existing debt amounted to a cancellation of that debt. And you can probably guess what happened. The money was so inflated, the exchange rate fell from one Continental per silver dollar to 40 to 1 and then 75 to 1 in little more than a year. Ultimately, Continentals fell 99% in value in just a few years, and the federal government reneged on their promise to pay Continentals with precious metals. So anyone left holding this worthless currency was entitled to receive just a penny for every dollar, a near total destruction of wealth. All right, but wait, uh, uh, Dr. Paul, that was a long, long time ago. I mean, before our current government even existed. I, I mean, they wouldn't do something like that now, would they? No, it happened over and over in 1971, 1933. It even happened with one of the most trusted U.S. presidents in history. President Lincoln created a system whereby the government changed the rules of finance. It's a sad story, actually. They created a new type of paper money known as greenbacks, specifically to pay soldiers and government debt. Meanwhile, the government itself didn't touch greenbacks. But they demanded taxes to be paid in silver and gold coins. So, a uh, double standard. A double standard for sure. And the new money plummeted in value, dropping 66% over several years. It took U.S. soldiers 15 years before they could ultimately redeem their greenbacks for an equivalent value of gold. Yeah, but still, again, th that was uh, during the Civil War, right? So, before uh, America was the most powerful country in the world. Yes, it was, but I hope you're starting to see a pattern here, Jared. Broke and desperate governments do truly desperate things. For example, what if I told you the government might put out a recall on your money, forcing you to turn it into federal banking facilities in exchange for something less valuable? Uh, I don't know. That sounds something like you would see in China or Russia, but not here. Well... Franklin Delano Roosevelt did exactly that when he gave Americans just one month to turn in all their gold bullion, common gold coins, and gold certificates to any member bank of the Federal Reserve System. Is that what actually happened? Look it up in the history books here in 1933. Anyone who failed to comply faced penalties including forfeiture fines and imprisonment. King. And here's the worst part. Once everyone turned in all their gold, Roosevelt instantly made the dollars they received less valuable. With the stroke of a pen, many Americans lost 41% of their savings overnight. People don't believe anything like this could happen today, but I'm telling you, it's coming. The U.S. government will use financial martial law. So was there anything that martial people could law. have done back then to the protect themselves? Edmonton. For most people, no. It was a disaster. But some did, sure. There's a famous story of a lawyer named Harold Bearford. For instance, he found a legal way to hold on to and accumulate even more gold during the FDR era. His holdings reportedly sold years later for something like 87 times his money. Okay, so the government destroyed the currency in the 1700s, the 1800s, and then again in the early 1900s. And at each turn, they implemented all kinds of schemes and laws to essentially steal money from regular citizens like you and me. But again, could it really happen? Not only will it happen again, but we're still feeling the effects of the last time it happened with Nixon. Remember, in 1971, when countries around the world lost faith in the dollar, President Nixon changed the rules overnight. He closed the gold window and decreed that dollars were no longer redeemable for gold. Well, fine, but that was 45 years ago. 
The damage is still being felt. You see, ending the tie to precious metals allowed the government to expand the money supply. And as I've said many times in my career in the House of Representatives, you can't create prosperity by printing money out of thin air. Ever since Nixon changed the rules, the value of the U.S. dollar has plummeted, Jared. Not to mention it ushered in one of the worst decades in financial history. Inflation soared by more than 100%. Unemployment went above 10%. Stocks fell 40% in a single 18-month period. And the Standard & Poor 500 fell as much as 45% in the first part of the decade. And interest rates ultimately soared to nearly 20% which made it very difficult for people to buy new houses or cars. Okay, but what could the government realistically do next? I mean, what would financial martial law look like in this day and age? The next step is very simple. They're going to take control of U.S. retirement accounts. It could be one of the biggest encroachments in our nation's history, but I think the chances are great that the U.S. government will soon target ordinary Americans' retirement accounts and essentially siphon out the money. But how can they do that? That's got to be illegal. Because uh, they act outside the law. Somebody says, you know, would that be unconstitutional? Obviously, well, the monetary system is unconstitutional. They never repair, repaired the part of the Constitution where the founders were emphatic. Only gold and silver can be legal tender. They just totally ignore it. And every time it's a case like that has gone to the courts, the court always rules on the side of government. It just seems crazy. I mean, how could the government get away with that? Jared, today there's about $23 trillion in U.S. retirement accounts. Suppose the government mandates that all citizens put one-third of these accounts into special issue U.S. Treasury securities. Well, lo and behold, that's an instant $7 trillion for the government. There's no way. I mean, you're, you're saying the government can force me to buy worthless treasury bonds? It's as legal as taxing you. You have to understand that $23 trillion just sitting around in retirement the accounts is too right much money for a desperate and broke government scam. to ignore. And let me tell you something. If you don't think this can happen right here in America, wake up. It's already being discussed. In 2008, Democrats talked about seizing private retirement accounts and converting them to private accounts contract, managed by Social Security. In 2013, the U.S. Consumer Financial Protection Bureau considered helping Americans manage their retirement accounts. And even Forbes.com contributor William Tucker suggested this could lead to forcing Americans to stock their retirement accounts with low-return government bonds. Not to mention, Obama recently introduced his My RA program, which amounts to an IRA that invests directly in government bonds any reasonable investor on the open market wouldn't touch. I worked in Washington. Do you want to turn your passion into your future calling? At the University of Waikato, we have a range of jobs long, so so we'll wait till the end. on the open market wouldn't touch. I worked in Washington for over 30 years, Jared. I Believe me, I, I know what these people are capable of, and I know how they think. I mean, it just seems incredible that the government would or could invade people's retirement accounts. Look it up in the history books. You don't have to go back very far. The U.S. Treasury Department has already done it three separate times. They raided government employee pension funds in 2011, 2012, and 2013 to plug federal spending deficits. Plus, this is already happening around the globe. In 2013, Poland sought to reduce public debt by nationalizing half of all money in private pensions. Similar things have happened in Argentina, Ireland, France, Russia, Belgium, Hungary, Cyprus, and Bolivia. You can't trust the government, Jared. Not with your money and your family's future. They won't save you and they can't help you. Confiscation of your retirement accounts is coming soon, I promise. If you ignore this possibility, you could lose everything you've saved if you're forced to buy worthless U.S. government bonds. What else do you think will happen in the U.S. Uh, if the government enforces this uh, financial martial law? I think we'll see huge tax increases and even a wealth tax, but it won't just be for the wealthy. So what do you mean? A wealth tax is basically a tax on everything you own. It's like property taxes, but instead of taxing just the value of your home each year, a wealth tax levies fees on everything you own, year after year after year. Now, how could the government possibly get away with that? The government makes the rules, Jared, not you or me. In a crisis situation like the one 
that's unfolding right now, they'll get away with just about anything. In many parts of the world, like France and India, similar wealth taxes already exist. And how does a uh, wealth tax work? Take India, for example. In India, the government tallies up everything you own, stocks, bonds, real estate, retirement accounts, you name it. Then you're forced to pay 1% tax for every penny of net worth over $48,000. And yes, you pay that every single year. And the people actually agree to this? They don't have a choice. E evading this tax is a criminal offense. You go to jail for seven years for under-recording your wealth in India. They also impose a penalty of up to 500% on any unreported amount. Oh, that's crazy. Well, get used to it, because it's coming here, too. There's simply no other way for our broke federal government to pay the $19 trillion in debt we owe today. And there's no other possible way to close out the $200 trillion fiscal gap, which is the obligations we've already promised in the future. Absolutely, obligations positively, written. no way possible. Queen. So, uh, again, with financial martial law, what else could happen? Well, here's something else. I think most Americans are going to be rudely shocked in the coming months, and that's retroactive taxes. What are retroactive taxes? It's something that a lot of broke states are already trying it right now. They're basically saying, you thought your taxes were paid for last year? Nope. Think again. We just passed a new law. Turns out you owe us up to an additional 3% on your income earned. Send us a check or else. And you say that this is already happening? Most recently in California, these kinds of retroactive tax increases have also been passed in Washington, Michigan, and Connecticut to help fund budget shortfalls. They say it's only temporary, of course. But we all know how that works in government. Temporary solutions have a nasty habit of becoming permanent. Dr. Paul, has it, has it really come to this? I mean, when did it become okay to confiscate money from ordinary, hardworking Americans to fund out-of-control government spending? And when did it become okay to retroactively increase taxes or, or mess around with our retirement accounts? Isn't there anything that can stop the government yes, from King taking this Paul. idea of financial martial law any account. further than it's Wait already me. gone? I wish I could say yes, but no. The politics no, of our economy you. prevents them from making the right Nine. decisions. And that's why Four I'm nine. here issuing this warning today. You absolutely must learn how to protect yourself, whether you've got $10,000 or $10 million in the bank. It won't matter. The government's coming for you and your money. And once the laws are in place, Good luck. So what else should I be worried about? I think uh, negative interest rates are on the way. That means instead of earning interest on money you have in the bank, you would have to pay the bank to hold your money for you. Sounds crazy, maybe, but this is all a consequence of what the Fed has been doing over the past decade, when it, trillions and trillions of artificial new dollars made their way into the economy. So I recommend you find a safe place you can keep money and still earn a decent return. Keep in mind, other governments around the globe have already tried to print money in massive quantities to pay their debt. In just the past 100 years, we've seen this scenario play out in Germany, Russia, Austria, Argentina, Brazil, Chile, Poland, Ukraine, Japan, and China. And of Not course, you, Zimbabwe. You, you, and guess what? In every single case, printing and borrowing money has always led to a currency crisis. The United States won't be an exception. We might be able to stave it off for a while and let this debt bubble get bigger and bigger. But it's going to pop at some point, Jared. Pop Mark the words. So let me ask you something. Is there any chance the that none of this stuff will come to pass? No, no chance. Get rid of them. The United States is not immune to the basic laws of economics and finance. No country in the history of mankind has ever managed to avoid the laws of economics. So there you go. That's um, Paul Ryan's, I think that's his name, um, take on where the economy is going. So, I get my. You know, so all I can say is this: for people watching my videos. The solution to that is simply the Moai Crown King William uh, Trust from Westminster and King William's flag and the native. Take away the native title from the um, federal state.
boot out the Queen, take out the Pope and the Rothschild banks, bankrupt them with the pound note, the Moai pound note that is, and get rid of one of the legs of the Crown Corporation's thugs here in New Zealand, John Key. Okay, take that one, that's where the most uh, of the business is happening here in this country with John Key as being one of the tentacles of the Crown Corporation. Okay, take that out. We have control with the flag of a king that created the mortgage land debtor instruments of the pound note and the Bank of England. Acts 1834. So we use that instrument and our native chiefs to force the issue with Britain, our partner, our private contract commercial trading bank partner um, in business contract um, to cancel the use of those admiralty laws for fraud and corruption purposes. That's in particular the Rothschild banks, their pound note bankrupt that lot and the Pope's use of the admiralty law for his money bankrupt that lot and the Federal State of America bankrupt that lot. Daryl Payne and Rennie Powers from California, you watch this video and that martial law, financial market martial law comes out of a king, not a queen, not a pope, not a president of America, that's second hand or vice admiral, it's not a real admiral. It comes out of the real admiral and the real admiral's flag of King William IV and King William III and the eight-point star of St. Patrick's Order, the New World Order. That's what we are um, proclaiming here as our ownership to use those laws, the 1830 to 1837 Acts of William, King William IV in Westminster Parliament as not changed. That's our contract and nobody's business. It's private business. Admiralty law and admiralty court martial law and admiralty financial law is private business of a king. There ain't no king in America. There ain't no king in New Zealand. There's only King Ernest Augustus the fifth and his son, Ernest Augustus Prince Regent in Westminster in Britain, UK as the King of Britain, UK. Our partner in business to sort this crap scam business out. Okay, so that's all. I see Jamie's online now and I'll go uh, to her and catch up with her going to Waitangi uh, for the 28th, the 182 years celebration of our flag of King William IV, the most powerful flag in the world of commerce, King of the Sea, King of the King's Royal Revenue in the King's Bench Court, Waitangi Marae, New Zealand. Okay, so that's all I'll say for now. Today's uh, Monday, the 17th of October 2016, wishing you a happy day and keep watching.